So, um, is this what he's talking about? See, see the first thing you have to ask is uh, whether or not Brad agrees with us. <laughs> well, as he does, I don't. <laughs> right? Agree? 
Yes. Yeah. By the way, do you think many exist? I've never understood this section. Well, I don't care. I just asked you whether or not, hey, is there a bunch of stuff? Sure. Oh, does it exist? Yeah. Thank you. You know the idea then. If many exist. That's all. But there is this, isn't there is this forget, word? Forget that. Okay. Right. What's the issue? If many exist. Yeah. Then there's certain consequences that might follow. Agree? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, for what? For the, this round. No. For appearances. No. For we're many. The, no, we're in the text. In, in, race, in relation to themselves. That's right. So here I have a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Uh, they may, in fact, each may be one of the things called selves. <laughs> we don't know yet, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, but could this be a self? Yes. And this one? Yeah. How about this dog or cat? Well, huh? yeah. Oh, trees? Sure. Oh. Grasshoppers? Yeah. No. Yeah. Even three legged ones. Oh, by the way, uh, just uh, what effect does that have on each of them themselves? Right. Uh, like, what effect does that have on each one of them? I imagine a curious one. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> You'd have to then. <clears throat> Talk about the implications of that, of if the many exist, then these exist, do they not? So then the selves, the selves exist among many. Oh, oh, oh. there may be more things than selves. Agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Sticks and stones and garbage cans, right? Yeah, yeah. But we're just pulling out one group, are we not? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. And what does he want to know? What effect it has on each of them? Yes. On themselves? Oh. Oh. Oh, by the way, he also wants to know uh, the effect on uh, the one. Right. Uh, especially in relation to itself. So, uh, Again, we're talking about uh, what hap What are the consequences about the one right, to itself? Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, and do the same thing if you assume that many does not exist. Your question now is, have we fairly represented that statement? That's your job. Okay. Can you repeat that, please? Can you repeat, repeat that? Sure, sure, sure. So do you think there are many things? Yes. Oh, among them are there uh, things called selves? Yes. Oh. So if many exist, there are selves, is that right? Yes. Well, uh, what are the consequences on these things? If indeed, see now we're giving an, uh, a special name to these selves, each one of them by necessity must exist, must they not? Yes. So each exists. And now he wants to know, what effect does it have on each of them that they exist? No, no, no. Oh, when you finish that, uh, uh, what effect does it have on the one? Not just widely, but just in terms of itself. Like, uh, some of these people may raise questions about uh, what's the difference between uh, 
my existence and myself. Might they not? And how does that relate to the one? Oh, would that be involved? Now they'd have to do some reflection. Oh. Oh, by the way, when you finish that, what would follow? The many didn't exist, and therefore none of this follows. So you'd have to go over each one of those. What are the implications if it doesn't follow? Uh, now, your job is to see whether that represents that position. Does it? Take a look now. one of those things be a one. Yes, each one of them would be a one. And, but then you would have to ask the many in relationship to the one. Which is, is not a, which is not just each being one, but the one. And and that one, so if the many exist, it seems like it would preclude the notion of the one, but but we have to keep the one in mind while we play this game. Right. Okay. Right. That's right. Like you might say, well, um, if the many exist, therefore, if that's all that exists, then there are no selves. But that's not what he's arguing for. He's arguing for, if the many exist, what are the consequences on selves? So therefore, the many exist and the selves exist. Now we have to see what else we must do. Right. Now look at the next one. Hey, look at the next one. It's rather interesting, is it not? Take a look. So your first question is whether the following thing is, is new or whether he's continuing with, the, with, with what we have already outlined. So that's a judgment call you have to make. Okay. Would you read it for me? 
And in turn? Yeah, and consider. Where? To consider. To consider. Okay. Right. Your judgment, you have to see whether or not that's a new subject or whether it continues from the old, from this old prior one. So just hold that. All right. What is he saying about the one and the many? Do you want to say what's important about in relation to itself? and in relation to one another. So that's the same thing. Uh, right. There are two people, mm -hmm. Harry and Mary. Mm -hmm. You want to know what is it about each? and the relationship they might have. Same thing. Mm -hmm. right. See if it fits. Take a look. See what if it fits. Okay. Notice now he shifts back to a relational term, likeness. Okay. See what? How would you set that up? Come on. How would you set it up? As you look at this one, on likeness, is he using the same strategy or approach as he's been doing with the other items? Yeah. Right? But different too, right? Because we have this part, what will result for each of the hypotheses? Oh. That's an addition. That's true. Yeah. But what is he hypothesizing? Take a look. Go ahead, read it. And again, in turn, one should hypothesize if likeness exists. All right, that's another one. Right? Hey! Hey! And if it did, go ahead. Doesn't, and, or, if it does not exist. Right. Okay. These are our subjects. Um, 
Go ahead. What do we want to know? If likeness exists or if it does not exist. Yeah, got it. Is that the same as an unlikeness? Is that no, well, uh, no. No, right. Wait, no. That's kind of weird. There's a different dialectic for if something is not, and if something is not likeness is not the same as unlikeness. Okay, so go ahead. What will result for each of the hypotheses? Okay, look here. Each of them is a hypothesis. So look here. Is he doing the same thing? Yeah. Go ahead. Both to the selves that are being hypothesized. Right. So there's a whole bunch of what? Selves. Other kinds of things, right? Right. We might call them selves. Go ahead. And to the others. And especially to others. Both in relation to selves and in relation to each other. Okay. Um, now this is a... Um, <clears throat> This is essentially the uh, problem of the time is. Because the whole creation is based upon the supreme principle of likeness. So, what are the consequences of likeness exists or if likeness does not exist? Yeah. Wait a minute. Especially in respect to... Self. Right? So we're putting that category. And to others. See, that's so important for a likeness. Right? Because you can't have likeness without others. Mm -hmm. It presupposes a relationship with at least two terms. Mm -hmm. So there must be others. Okay? And now he wants to see, okay, now tell me, how does that relate to? Selves. And? Relation and? To each other. Yeah, that would be... Each other. Each, each of the others that you've identified. Right. And he, you know what he says about this? Ah, it's logos. Okay, the same test. Have we fairly represented it? That's your job. David. Um, I, I don't want to confuse. I, I, if, I, if I were to do this, I would want to ask also likeness in relationship to the one and the many. And are, are we allowed to bring sure, off each segment sure. or do we have to bring no. in all the other terms? No. Uh, he's saying you follow this model of Zeno's. For likeness. We can say, hey, you know what? We'd like to do a little better than that. And that's our freedom. Okay. That's our freedom. So, uh, shall we go further then and take a look at the logos? Okay. Need a reader? I have an old translation. All right, okay. And the self same logos must also be applied to unlike, to motion and rest, to generation and dissolution, and to the self that is, and to the self that is not, and in one logos, concerning that which should be hypothesized as always being and not being, and in one logos, concerning that which should be hypothesized as always being and not being, and anything else that undergoes any experience whatsoever, one must consider the consequences in relation to self and in relation to each one of the others being considered, which anyone may set up for this purpose, and relation to many, there it is, and relation, and similarly in relationship, in relation to everything. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> wow. Now look here. He doesn't give us any examples of those things. Take a look at them. 
Look, go over it. Wow. Likeness, unlike, motion, rest, generation, dissolution. And, and anything else that, undergo that undergoes any experience. No, hey, no examples. That's why we need Proclus. Mm. Because Proclus gives examples of each one of those ideas and he presents them within 24 possibilities and he outlines them in two sets of 12, positive and negative. So thank goodness for Proclus because he doesn't help us. Is it because they, like a Greek would already know it? Um, you can speculate. I, uh, the important thing is he doesn't think it's worthwhile to give an example at this point for some reason. But the assumption must be uh, he must have known the 40 theses of Zeno. And in the 40 theses of Zeno, he, he must have pulled these out of Zeno's hypotheses. Right? He did 40. We don't have a record of the 40. But Proclus introduces each one of these ideas and a couple of other ones which are not mentioned here in the example of the dialectic. So we can assume that uh, a couple of these boys must have known the 40 hypotheses. Second assumption would be that it's likely that these ideas that he just went over were included in that, but he doesn't tell us, he doesn't explain it. Proclus does. And so, thank goodness for that. All right, okay, go back, hold it. Oh, okay. Now look here. Uh, try finishing it. And again, David? Uh, let's see, and again, uh, where is that? And, and in turn, how others are related to self. Right. And to any other which one may select. Whether you will hypothesize as the subject of your hypothesis, that which always is, or that which is not. If you care about being perfectly exercised to thoroughly behold the truth in a masterful way. Right. <laughs> so, look here. Uh, it's really important that you get into the commentary and you pick out one of those that he gives examples of the dialectic and master it. You have your pick. Also has on the soul. He has it on providence. So he adds things that are not in that list. You have to decide which one you want to master. Because that will give you the experience of playing where we're going. Okay? Now... Uh, would you not agree it's a good thing to see how Socrates responds? Right? And he goes, You speak, O Parmenides, of an extraordinary undertaking, and I do not quite understand but why do not hypothesize and detail a certain or definite self for me in order that I may be more able to understand? Yeah, what's he doing? Why not unfold in detail an example, right, a certain hypothesis for me yourself in order that I can understand what you're talking about? Isn't that perfect? Yeah. Right. Okay, now look, next one. Go ahead. 
You assign, O oh Socrates, much work for one as old as me. Mm. Go ahead. Then in that case, Zeno, why don't you unfold it in detail for us? <laughs> yeah, hey, if you don't want to do it, I'll pick on your, your students, uh, Zeno. Go ahead, it's your turn. Go ahead. Then Zeno laughing said, We must ask Parmenides himself, O Socrates, for as it has been said, it is indeed no trifling matter, or do you not see the magnitude of the work you are assigning? If then on the one hand more of us were present, it would not be appropriate to make such a request. For it is unsuitable, and especially for a man of his age, to speak of matters such as these in the presence of many people. For the many are ignorant that without this discursive procession and wandering through all beings or cities, it happens to be impossible for the mind to hold on to the truth. Therefore, O Parmenides, I ask in conjunction with Socrates that you yourself undertake the discussion in order that I may also hear to the end that which I heard some time ago. Good, thank you. Say, uh, David, um, yeah. what do you think of that point? That uh, he wouldn't do it uh, had it not been for the group he was with. Well, what do you think of that? Is that important? I don't know, but I read something about what sort of preparation yes. it would take for somebody to be able to do this with um, uh, any and receive any benefit. That's good, um, good, good. Can you add? Uh, um, like there's a whole moral teaching yeah. and preparation and purgation mm -hmm. before you're allowed to play the game. Yeah, and and. I'll, to understand certain paradigms and relationships which may either exist in the world or beyond. Yeah. So, do you think uh, Eldar should tell us why he thinks you have to watch out who you invite for such a discussion on these hypotheses? <laughs> yes. Well, according to what David said, there wouldn't be many people who, <laughs> who would be trained and ready to okay. be in the, keep going to be in the presence of that kind of a yeah now go back to the original question but also uh, I mean there are many reasons like for, for example it can be dangerous to dangerous to talk about go ahead. things like that in front of anyone hmm Hmm. Yeah, right, because we might get into a realm that isn't socially um, part of the, the social structure or fabric. Or religiously. And, and therefore offend certain people. So when Parmenides says, hey, you know why I think I'll do that? Because I heard you, Socrates, and Al Al uh, Aristoteles talking the other day and there was a divine spirit in your dialogue, and therefore I deeply appreciate it, the way you reasoned. So he's, he's saying, hey, this is a good group. You guys are cool. Do you think it would help <laughs> if you screened some of the people to yeah. make sure they can follow certain kind of reasons? Absolutely. Ooh. I think it's necessary. Yeah, but Barbara wouldn't agree with you. Or would she? Well, I just wondered whether his mom would be on the list <laughs> or oh, okay. Sam. Mine, mine, uh, no. Good point. Yeah, what would happen <laughs> at home? What would happen at home? Yeah, You're not allowed to speak or. She would say, "You don't, you don't go either." <laughs> You're supposed to be invisible. Shut up. <laughs> okay, hold it. Time's up. Well, I just have Hold one, the, one. The other two. danger. Uh, yes, first. Yeah, just really. I don't know. What was the right answer to that question? Pardon me? What, what was the right answer to that question? Why is it that you can only play this game with a certain number of people? Yeah. Because most people have not been taught how to reason with this kind of precision. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to first school them 
very carefully and to follow, etc. And that's a yeah. That's alien it's in our like, culture. It's like it's like you. If I understand this correctly, it's like he he has the fuse with him. He can't be talking about this with the many. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. See you next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, how do you do? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold it. Yes. Oh, yeah, one more question. Yeah, yeah, drive. Oh, I didn't have a question. I'm good. <laughs> okay. We're good. We're good. Oh, I just thought there's another aspect of like revealing the mysteries to people that don't know how to use them properly. That's true. like if you start revealing to people what is the nature of good and one, and talking to them about unity and communion, then they can place that upon the wrong object. And so that's a very powerful ignorance to place. You know, like, Placing the wrong knowledge in the, in the wrong, the right knowledge in the wrong people's hands. Yeah, it's like, like it, you can manipulate people with their hypotheses, and they don't know how they're being manipulated. It's like so the, that's another. That's like a dark side of it, not the same. Uh, as that well, and all the work that we did together, there was very few times when there was disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know what Josh said goes to the Republic, and the unjust man and the just man, right? They both have courage, temperance, and wisdom. And that the key difference is justice. Thank you, sir. Uh, you're all good. You got it off? You got it off. Uh, I didn't even know. We went through three microphones tonight. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I didn't see that.